If you would like cheap and reliable MT, be sure to head over to NBAKing.com and use code BIO2K for 5% off your final order. What is going on, guys? It is your boy, BIO2K, and today, man, I'm going to be bringing you guys a video that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of you guys have been asking for, and it's sort of an updated defensive settings video, and just how to improve your defense in 2K Unlimited. Now, uh, you guys see this is an empty lineup screen. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to walk you through how I make my lineup, basically. Um, and then we're going to get into the game. I'll show you guys the settings. And depending on who we play, I might even try to show you guys how to run a 2-3 zone in this video. So if it's in the title, then I got you. If it's not in the title, then I probably don't show it. So if you guys do enjoy this video, do me a favor and leave a like on the video. It would be greatly appreciated. Let's try to hit like 100 likes on this video. You guys have been killing the support lately. Like absolutely insane. Been killing it. So yeah, do me a favor and hit that like button if you guys do enjoy. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to consider hitting that subscribe button. I mean, like literally I hit 22K like a day ago and y'all can see where we're at already because y'all are literally insane so would be greatly appreciated if you guys do that for me and with that being said let's hop right into it so with my point guards what i always like to do is have a point guard that does have a little bit more of like a reach on the ball actually a little bit better defensively but can also knock down the three ball very well that's guys like john stockton rondo penny um you have baron davis obviously um outside of the pink diamonds you have good budget options and kyle lowry um bob Cousy's still a very solid option um chris paul am this is very good as well a lot of good budget point guards in this game um i'm not going to use penny because i know a lot of people might not have him so i'm going to go ahead with the new rondo that did just come out and for my backup point guard same exact thing we're going to go ahead and add in john stockton again both of them are very good as far as passing the ball but they both are very good defensively they both have clamps and that is like the most important badge in this game now with my two guard position, what I like to do is actually run a shooting guard that can shoot the ball very well, but also again, play very good clamped up defense. So in the two position, um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and run Kobe now. And then off the bench, what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and run Dr. J. Now I know I probably should start Dr. J, but we're gonna put him at our backup two position. He's a good card. I just really like Kobe better as far as like an offensive standpoint. Um, and I feel like he'll pair better a little bit with Rondo rather than um, with, like with Dr. J pairing up with Rondo. So again, same thing. First two positions, really good at scorers, but also really good defensively. All of them have clamps to some extent. And, you know, they're going to be in passing lanes. I don't know if Kobe has interceptor or not. I'm kind of hoping he does. But if he doesn't, it's not that. Yeah, he does. So he has an interceptor. I know Rondo does. I don't know if John Stockton does. But yeah, he does on Hall of Fame too. And then I do hope that Dr. J has it as well. But Interceptor is a very good badge to have, which he actually doesn't. Okay, so that's fine. But Interceptor is very good for what I will be, what I will be showing you guys in the game. For my small forward position, we are going to be going ahead and doing Diamond Jimmy Butler. Same thing again, a defensive god that has a good like you know good badges to jump passing lanes and also play really good lockdown defense another important rating that i feel like gets overlooked a lot in this game is a strength rating because strength rating is actually gonna is gonna be how you're like you know you know you kind of prevent getting bumped by and stuff like that off the bench what we're actually gonna do is actually run um what's his name i actually forgot i sold lamar odom yesterday that is normally who I would run here. So um, I'm trying to think of a nice little like budget option for you guys that I can kind of throw in here. Um, so I have no idea. Uh, I, I really have no idea who I could throw in here. You know what? We're actually going to put Dr. J at the three and then off the bench. We're going to go ahead and run. Um, what's his name? We're going to go ahead and run my boy JR. Why not have a little bit of fun with JR again? He, is, he doesn't even make the cut anymore. So we got to we got to show him some love. But in the starting lineup, our stretch four that we're going to be having in the starting lineup is going to be Giannis Antetokounmpo. And I, I don't really mean like stretch four, stretch four. Y'all just know that Giannis is very glitchy and will be in passing lanes a lot. I do recommend using Giannis. I don't even care if you guys are like broke on MT. Giannis is one of the glitchiest cards in this game. So if you can get his diamond card, his amethyst card, even his heat check card, make sure you pick that up. It's a very good addition to your team to have, believe me. Off the bench, what we are going to be doing for our power forward here, um, defensively, I don't know really who I want to run. I think I'm just going to go ahead with Blake. 
He's a very good, you know, he's actually a very good stretch big. His defense kind of lacks. However, his strength rating is pretty good. So he does stay in front of people a lot. It's just he's going to kind of get exposed everywhere else. Now, our centers are actually really important. I tell you guys this all the time. You need to make sure that your centers, one, are a stretch big so you're not getting killed by off ballers. And two, you need to make sure that they do have either like intimidator or just really good defensive badges to make sure that they're actually blocking shots and they're actually influencing shots in the paint so d rob is going to be my starting center here you guys can just see the amount of amazing badges he has very good you know offensive badges but also really good defensive badges as well definitely a very good center now i don't expect you guys to all have d rob at this point so my backup center, I was going to run Yao, but I think a nice somewhat budget option for you guys would be this Pink Diamond Will Chamberlain. Now, he can't shoot nearly as well as I want him to, but you can work your way around that if you kind of know what you're doing. Will Chamberlain is a very good post player, so if you go in the post and look to kick out to any of these guys, they will knock down the three efficiently, so you're not really, you don't really have to worry about getting off-balled or anything like that. The reason why I recommend running a good stretch big next to Giannis is because Giannis can shoot the ball very well, his release is very good. But I, just for me personally, I brick a lot with him. So I like running D-Rob there. But again, Will Chamberlain, same thing. Has Intimidator, has all that fun stuff to make people miss like wide open layups and stuff. All right, so we got a match here going up against N Parm 04. Very interesting team. Um, he does have a pretty good team all around. But immediately, I'm looking at two players in his lineup. Um, I think DeRozan has to have claims because I know a lot of comp players are using him. But Terrence Ross and Damian Lillard, neither of them do, I, I don't think. So, I know Lillard doesn't, but I'm pretty sure that Terrence Ross doesn't either. So, immediately, you know, just pre-game thoughts for you guys. Um, I'm going to be, uh, you know, probably attacking them. One thing I wanted to tell or ask you guys, too, is um, if you guys know who Throne is, he does a series on Madden called, like, Inside the, Inside the Mind. And he basically walks you through everything he does in the game. So, if you guys want me to do something like that with 2K, let me know. So, defensive settings, though. Here we go. Immediately I go tight and tight. It just kind of helps with jumping passing lanes a little bit and also like, you know, sticking good like on ball defense or off ball defense when you're kind of rotating yourself. Um, force direction, I always put this on middle because when you put this on middle, it'll force people to the middle of the floor, which will result in a lot more bump turnovers and stuff like that. Um, coming down here, I do drive help on no help and screen help on no help. When you like, if you do this, you have to fix rotations yourself. Like, as far as, you know, when people are bouncing between screens left and right, you have to make sure that you're actually able to fix the screen yourself. Like, you see on the screen right here where, like, X is, or, you know, like, when the arrow is inside the paint, the or the X closest to the arrow to the left, that is where you would have to bring your guy up and rotate. Or if there's another guy on the perimeter, that would be where you'd rotate as well to fix that. Other than that, there's nothing else that I really do, like, in this menu. I know a lot of people like to do um, like the switching and stuff like that. Nothing else really needs to be done. The only other thing I do recommend doing if you guys are struggling a little bit is stay attached puts on yes. It'll help actually cover a lot more people, making sure that they're not like just left wide open. Um, so yeah, that's just a little tip right there. And then you just want to make sure that your coaching, like your adaptive coaching en engine is turned off because if it's left on, they'll just change things by themselves and you definitely don't want that happening. Oh, okay, we get a nice little bump steal right off the rip. All right, see, like, that's what I'm talking about. Right away, we're getting that bump steal. The only thing I did, like, that you guys probably wouldn't have seen yet is I actually put it on um, no threes. So right here, if you hit right on the D-pad and scroll over one, you're going to see no threes. The next thing you're going to want to do is put that on wall up. When you put it on wall up, your guys will naturally just protect the paint. That is perfect defense right there. They really didn't call a foul, which is good. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, we just don't grab the rebound right there. But like I said, right away, we're putting it on no threes and we're putting it on wall up. Now, when we do that, the whole purpose of that is to make it so, um, God damn, bro. What a block by freaking, uh, what's his name by Zion, huh? Like, God damn. Let's go Butler right there. That's a good steal. Again, um, you guys can see like that is all from freaking, oh, like, what am I doing, bro? I knew he was trying to bait that and my dumb ass still threw it. That's on me. Like, that's just, that's just my fault right there. Um, but yeah, so again, wall up is just to protect the paint on fast break situations here. Let's go. Easy Giannis, there we go. Um, so yeah, again, no threes, wall up. You're going to want to put this on play physical. And then the final one you're going to want to put is crash the glass. Now, when you have it on all of those, what actually ends up happening is, um, you know, crash the glass. Obviously, your guys will be going for a little bit more rebounds. And then play physical, 
when your guys are getting bumped a lot, they're actually going to be kind of like fighting back in different ways and stuff like that. That'll actually help you, you know, play a little bit better defense and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> sorry if you guys can hear my PS4. <clears throat> I know it sounds like a freaking like engine's about to take off. I have no idea why it's that loud. I really have no idea. Right there, we're in the passing lanes getting a good steal, Giannis. Let's go push this tempo out, buddy. Hop stepped up all the way. Easy layup. I'll take that. Nice fast break bucket. Right away, though, we already have, like, three steals, and we even have, like, a little bit more stuff that should be more steals. Let's go. Another good bump turnover right there. You guys can see, like, we're in these passing lanes getting a lot of different turnovers and stuff like that. My meter got left on. I have no idea why. Um, I'm actually going to leave it on because somebody said that you shoot better now with the meter on. So we're going to test that out this game. Clearly not. I mean, we're missing freaking everything wide open. Finally get something to drop right there. But so far, you guys can see, we're already getting a lot of steals. We just got to be able to capitalize on the offensive end. I want to remind you guys, too, just because you guys do these settings doesn't mean, you know, that you're just going to be getting bump steals. You guys got to watch what I'm doing in this video, reading defenses and stuff like that, making sure, you know, we're not getting, we're not letting up anything easy. That's perfect defense right there. It's 2K20 and stuff like that is going to go in. You guys know that this is the land of bailing kids out. So, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you just kind of have to play through it. Oh, that's good defense right there. See, my opponent knows what he's doing. I mean, I'm not going to discredit that at all. He definitely is pretty good at this game. Rondo's going to get a great steal right there. And, again, that's what I was talking about before. You need to have a point guard with really good badges. That's why I really do enjoy this Rondo. He has pickpocket, interceptor. I mean, he has literally everything you would need. He's going all the way with that, finishing it strong at the rim. And, again, right away, we already are forcing so many different turnovers that if we were, like I said, actually able to capitalize on the offensive end here, like right there, we're in that passing lane. Again, you just got to be able to predict where your opponent is going to throw the ball. A lot of people ask me, like, oh, Bio, you know, how do you bait people? Like, I, you know, I'm, I try to bait people and I leave them open and whatnot. All it is is realistically making your opponent think that they're open, but, you know, they're not actually open. Again, right there, that's technically a bailout. He just drove right into the paint, click square. There's nothing I can do about that. We're going to get Jimmy Butler wide open again. Hopefully he knocks that down. There we go. Um... But, yeah, you guys can see, like like I said, we're in almost every single passing lane doing what we got to be doing here. He's going to kick that out to the perimeter. Let's go. See, that could have been another turnover right there. We're in these passing lanes doing what we got to be doing here. That's good defense from Butler. He's going to snag that board. Again, great defense, though, because we're all collapsing in the paint. That is kind of what the wall up thing is. Um, when you do wall up, like I said, they all tend to collapse in the paint. And, um, yeah. Let's go. He's going to back up. Leave me wide open. D-Rob, good shot. Now we're starting to score efficiently. You guys can see that the lead is breaking out for sure. He's going to try to play faster. And when your opponents play faster, that is going to be a better thing for you. Again, he gets a lucky blow by animation right there. But you guys obviously know how this game is. So I, I, I know that you guys are smart enough to figure out that, you know, not every possession is going to be a stop just because that's how this game just truly is. Like right here, we'll get an easy dunk at the rim. Um... <clears throat> But again, we're going to just read this defense and keep trying to clamp up as much as we can here. He's going to cross over, so we're going to be right there for that pass. There we go, forcing another turnover. Giannis is pushing this tempo, going all the way with it. Hop stepping, easy layup for Giannis. Okay, really? Like, look, I'm all for the, uh, you know, for the fun of, you know, bailing out opponents and whatnot, but missing wide open layups is kind of where I draw the line. I just want to show you guys, he did shoot a good percentage, a 7 out of 10. Three of those shots you guys saw shouldn't have even gone in, and he had seven turnovers in the first quarter. I'm telling you, these settings really work. You just have to fix the rotations yourself and be in those passing lanes, and you will shut down opponents so fast. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking me too, like, oh, Bio, you know, this opponent, he's just trying to five out me. Like, what do I do to stop that? Five out is one of the hardest things to stop in this game. Um, I'm going to make a whole separate video on how to potentially stop it. It's not guaranteed. There's no real way to stop five out like if you go up against a guy like splash you're not gonna stop it like just doing the same thing every time it, it ain't gonna happen like again right there he's gonna get bailed out there's nothing you could do about it um but yeah i got y'all with that video coming soon um <clears throat> but again if you get an opponent that's just rim running best thing to do is lock up in a zone and again i will probably make a whole separate video now that i think about it on how to run a zone because there is a little bit more talking that goes involved to it because a lot of people think that you could just set up some settings and you'll be good at running a zone it just doesn't really work that way so um unfortunately you know like i said can we pass the d-rob like god damn bro 
Thank you. I was going to say, he's just chilling in the paint. Like, I'm going to take my defensive three in, like, literally one more second right there. Rondo, again, a great addition to this team as well. Seven and four for him already. So right here, you guys, again, can see the score. We're kind of starting to flood our opponent here. We have a nice little 15-point lead. And, again, like, we're going to just sit in this zone for a little bit, kind of see if he knows how to break it. That's a terrible shot right away. See, he's kind of flustered, too. And when you notice that your opponent is flustered, you have to keep attacking him. Like, honestly, you have to keep playing fast, making sure you're scoring efficiently because if you keep doing that, they're going to quit. So, again, we're pushing this lead out as much as we can. He's probably going to look for a corner thing right here. That was a late contest on me. But again, he's got no momentum on his side, so we're going to get that stopped. DeRozan's just going to green that because he got the board. Like I said, unfortunately, that's the only downside about running a zone is uh, you actually, you know, your opponents will get left wide open just based on the fact that they get freaking rebounds all the time. So it is what it is on that standpoint. But, uh, yeah, going all the way. Oh, I thought he was going to rotate in. That's on me. I really thought he was going to rotate in on that. So, basically, at this point, all my opponent is really doing on offense is just rim running. Uh, oh, my God. I thought Butler stayed in the corner. I didn't realize they freaking rotated, like, in with the defender. Well, it makes sense now. But, um, like, when I think about it. But, yeah, all he's really doing is just kind of rim running and getting away with it. So, once we shut that down, like, he isn't going to know what to do right here. So, like, again, D like, that should be a block. There's nothing else I can really do. He's literally just rim running and getting easy dunks. But... You guys can see, we definitely have a sizable lead here, just mainly from all those bum turnovers and stuff like that. That is just the way that we, you know, like I said, that's the way I play Unlimited. You guys see all the time when I stream and whatnot. Um, these defensive settings really are what, like, help me do so well in Unlimited. Like I said, it's just based off the fact that when I'm doing all this, like, it just, it's helping me get so many easy steals, which has helped leak or help me get easy, like, transition buckets and stuff like that. And that's really all it is. Like, again, he's going to rim run and just... Yeah. Let's go, Giannis. Let's go, baby. See, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted I wanted a contact dunk animation. I finally figured out how to kind of shut this guy down. He's pretty much probably going to quit after this point cuz yeah, now he's just freaking He realized that I know how to like stop him from just rim running entirely now. And uh, yeah, ever since I did that, yeah, he has no idea what to do. So now the floodgates are officially just about to open, and we're about to wreak havoc here. You guys can see he's shooting 58%, even though the game has been kind of selling me the whole time. That should have been a steal right there. But, yeah, we have a really good amount of steals here. We're playing great defense all around. We're shutting down the lanes. We're doing a little bit of everything. Again, you're going to get blow buys on. You know, all this stuff is going to happen to you, but... You know, you still, I still have a sizable lead in this game, and I'm sure you guys are going to as well. Like I said, it's all about playing smart, playing efficient, being in those passing lanes, and just getting a lot of bump turnovers. So I've never seen this happen before, okay? My opponent, all right, throws it into three people in the paint, gets the animation when they do this, you know, they pick up the ball, he clicks square, Will on his team just goes and flops. The ball goes through the net, he gets an and one, he gets mad and quits. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. All I know is is that my opponent had 13 turnovers in the first half of basketball. I'm telling you, that is how you shut down your opponent, by being in passing lanes, by getting a lot of bump turnovers. Because like I said, when you force the floor to collapse, it causes a lot of bump turnovers for you to get easy fast break buckets. You just got to make sure you're capitalizing on offense, and it's basically that simple. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope this video did help you guys out. If you guys do have any questions or anything like that, be sure to ask me in the comment section down below. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching once again. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.